What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering, and I hope you're having a wonderful day. We're marching on towards 1 million subscribers. If you haven't subscribed yet, please click that red subscribe button down below the video. It'll help you get notified when I upload, make you find my videos easier, and you can participate to the march to 1 million by the end of the year. If not, that's okay. Maybe leave a like anyway. Now, safe spaces are a hilarious thing that have come about, they've probably existed forever, uh, but really only uh, garnered popularity or, or nomenclature around it uh, in with the millennials. And essentially what it is, is when you surround yourself by opinions or people whom which you only agree with and you actively seek to avoid or block out people that you disagree with. This is you creating a safe space. This is most prevalent on Twitter. Um, now, if you live in a safe space, the best thing to do is decorate it with amazing art that also supports the channel. Huge shout out to this video sponsor, Display. This month, we're celebrating comics in all the right ways. Displates are high quality prints on metal. You can get them with a matte finish. You can get them with the glossy finish. You can see I've picked out a couple of my favorite comic book themed displates behind there, but they don't just have displates for comics. They have them for nature. They have different cartoons. They have anime. They have movies. They have basically anything you can imagine on a display which mounts magnetically to your wall so you don't have to drill holes. I myself have accumulated a nice big collection of these. So once a month I swap them in, swap them out. I have seasonal ones I can put up, take down. And Displate loves you all, the Quarterings viewers, and they've given me a special discount. One to two displates are gonna get 33% off. Three or more displates, you're getting 38% off. I don't think I've had a deal this big before. Your purchases from Displate go directly to support this channel. Plus, you're gonna get a great deal on some awesome stuff to put up on your walls. Christmas is coming up, dorm rooms, maybe your home, your stuck home, whatever your reason is, I'm sure you can find room for a couple of nice ladies like Harley Quinn up on your wall. So use my link in the pinned comment below. There's only a few days of this sale. It ends very soon on October 2nd. So pick your disc plates up today, pick up a couple of them, and tweet which ones you get at me on Twitter, and I'll definitely share them out. Eh? Not a bad sponsor transition. Pick up your disc plates today. They go directly to supporting the channel. It's such a powerful way to support and also get some awesome art. Now, there's a brand new social media app that is offering a safe space for users. This is via Reclaim the Net. Those who want more self-censorship, not less, will be fans of telepath. Lovers of the open internet have long been perplexed by the clear trend to box in users, especially on social networks. Drive them into echo chambers thanks to the way information is available in their feeds, is organized through algorithmic decisions and extensive data mining. That technique has proven handy in not only keeping people, quote, happy in their own bias, but also in perpetuating and reinforcing commercial and political messages aimed at maintaining segregated, segregated subsets of users. Now, that, that language really makes me uh, want to point out the difference between, you know, individualism and collectivism. If you're a viewer of mine, I implore you to try and form your own opinions. Um, it's, it's the same way I talk about having personal responsibility for our actions, not blaming systemic this or systemic that, in blaming yourself for your mistakes and accepting them, apologizing, amending, and moving on is the only way people grow. It's the same thing with safe spaces. If you live in them, and you seek them out, you will never grow as a human being. Don't be a collectivist. Don't seek to allow others to so easily dismiss you. What that is, is about compartmentalizing people and saying, oh, if you're this, then I already know everything you think about everything, and I can make broad generalizations about you. Uh, don't let people collectivize you. 
But then for those whom in even the way of Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube consistently constrain the virtual space inhabited by their users, fencing them in and limiting their access to information isn't good or let's say bad enough. For this audience, a new network is emerging called Telepath. The title of the article that announces it um, sets out the intent right out of the gate. Quote, it's a social network that wants to be kinder and wouldn't the internet also play along and somehow get nicer? The rules, be kind. Don't be mean. Don't attack people or insult when they post. Assume that people have good intentions. <laughs> I have uh, some uh, rainbow insurance to sell you. No identity-based attacks. Use your full and real name. No fake names or pretending to be somebody you're not. We think real names are an important part of authentic and kind community. Whoa! Forcing people to use... I don't know how they're going to do this, uh, but interestingly enough, it says doxing is not allowed. I said we will make exceptions if this rule, if you're better known by a name other than your legal name, e.g. trans people who go by a different name. What about brands? No being mean. Doxing is not allowed. Don't share personal information, but you're making me use my real name. No fake news. <laughs> Don't circle the drain. No mean links. No prawn. Stay on topic and tone. How on God's green earth are they going to enforce this? Some may think there's a parody of some sort, trying to make fun of the whole woke and safe space overkill we've been witnessing in the past few years, especially when the mission statement is worded the way it is from the jump, but that's not the case. It's an actual project spearheaded as co-founder by Mark Bodnick, uh, who was previously at Cura, a site that's attracted its share of criticism over the years on a number of diverse points. You could say this, the internet sucks for women. I, I think uh, there's a lot of women on OnlyFans do, who disagree. It's not just obvious. It's also the hostile, subtle, passive, aggressive, blah, 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 blah. So with that said, I want to explain how Telepath thinks about kindness, online misogyny, and community moderation. So a small group of men on the internet slice, uh, silence, and drive out women from participating in online spaces. It's hard to say whether misogyny or disinformation is the biggest problem with the conversation, but both are a crisis. One of the most important problems Telepath is focused on making the community fun and safe for women. We want women to feel to love Telepath, ideally more than men do. Making women feel good, comfortable, and confident. That's critical to an awesome modern conversation community. So you want to have women in a superior position? That's what's critical to you? Now this new network has come up with and what could be seen as wholesomely patronizing idea that certain types of users, namely women, POCs, and LGBT folk, may not be fully capable of participating online and holding out their own with everybody else. It's a bigotry of low expectations, right? And instead, need an extra protection in the form of a super safe space social network. But at this point, seriously, why not just set up a closed group and chat amongst yourselves? Why line the pockets of any woke opportunists preying on a clearly bottom line identifies the Internet's weak demographic? That's an interesting part of this, too, because that's that's essentially what they're saying. They're saying, we think you're weak, women and LGBTQ people. Uh, so give us money and we'll protect you from having real conversations. I, I don't understand I mean, look, I get it. I have had a long history of getting fed up with Twitter and saying I'm going to quit uh, and getting annoyed with people constantly badgering me. It's real. It's the same stress. Look, I've got 90,000 followers on my Twitter account. By the way, you should consider following there or on Parler. I have the same problem somebody does with 10 followers where people can just get on your nerves you start to kind of seek out the negative. You start to kind of know the trolls more than you know your own viewers and fans. Uh, and it's a bad mindset to be in. Do, does that mean I want to seek out a safe space? No. This is the same conversation I've had with Parler. I think Parler is definitely too right-leaning. 
I don't think they set out to be a safe space. I don't want them to be a safe space. I want prominent leftists and um, uh, left-leaning people to use Parler because the bigger danger is the tech monopoly that everyone should agree is a problem regardless of whatever political stances you may have. So this is why I support all tech. I don't want just, I don't want more division. I just want better conversations. This app, of course, is more like more gatekeeping and uh, the bigotry of low expectations for women, LGBTQ folks, and people of color. Why is it always the woke people that seem to have the most backward ideas about their fellow, fellow humans? I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.